Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. And in this one, I want to go over some points on how to stabilize your nuclear reactors and some general safety around them so that this doesn't happen in your world. Now, I don't play much survival, but even I can understand that losing a reactor feels really bad. It's a waste of resources. Now, this suggestion was given to me by Excalibur on the nuclear reactor explosion video. So that is what we are going to cover in this one. How to stabilize the most used reactor in nuclear tech mode. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, the first point that I want to cover is chunk loading. Now you want to make sure that the chunk in which the reactor is placed is always loaded. So if we wander far away from here, then this chunk right now will become unloaded. To keep it always loaded, make sure to use a chunk loader. This chunk loader right here is from Chicken Chunks mod. And you can adjust the radius or basically how many chunks you want to load around this chunk loader. Make sure that the reactor is always in a loaded chunk and this especially applies to very hot running reactors like RBMKs and DFC. Now another point around chunk loaders is that make sure that your reactor fits in a single chunk space. So don't place your reactor on a chunk border so that you need to load two chunks instead of a single one. Try and basically try to design your reactor so that it will fit in a single chunk. That should be enough for smaller reactors. Another thing is that don't place your reactors on ground like in the biome that you are in for example don't place it on sand or grass always make a solid foundation for your reactors and that solid foundation can be made with any type of concrete because concrete won't be broken by any type of nuclear explosion another thing for your personal safety always wear hazmat suits while working with nuclear reactors this will protect you from radiation for even more protection you can use red always this will increase your radiation resistance once you take them so yeah and another thing you can also use player decontaminators because while you stand on decontaminators all your radiation will go away and then we also have the radiation absorbers which will absorb radiation from a single chunk or the chunk in which they are placed different absorbers will absorb at a different rate closed water circuit will apply to every nuclear reactor in the mod which is cooled by water so we have a tank of water which goes in a nuclear reactor where fission takes place fission generates heat which converts water into steam that steam then gets compressed and passes through different sets of turbine and finally gets converted into low pressure steam the low pressure steam ends up in a cooling tower or a condenser where it finally gets converted back into water and ends up in the tank or our main water tank the first problem that you can encounter with this system is you won't have enough water or you won't generate enough water that can cool the reactor fast enough. So to solve this problem, simply add more water tanks. Like add tanks with higher buffer, higher internal buffer and add heavy infinite water tanks in them so that you have more than enough water which is much better than having less water. Another thing, steam can get clogged up either in the turbines or in the reactor itself and that is not good. If steam is clogged up, that means water circulation will stop. This problem won't occur with Leviathan steam turbine because it converts steam extremely fast, but this problem will occur with normal steam turbine and also the industrial turbine. Another thing, make sure to use enough cooling towers because if you don't have enough cooling towers, that means there is not enough water circulated back into the system to complete the closed loop. So yeah, have enough water, have enough cooling tower and yeah, make sure to use enough turbines. Now we start with the first reactor which is the Chicago pile. So the main reason that the Chicago pile will explode is if you are producing neutrons and they have nowhere to escape. So here I have made a simple two layer Chicago pile with no escape for neutrons. So there we go. As soon as I placed the neutron source which is the radium beryllium neutron source the Chicago pile exploded. A simple solution to that is that once you make layers make sure to leave some gap between them the efficiency is maximum at 1.5 blocks so i have left two blocks gap between each layer of the chicago pile and now place your uranium like this and in the middle we can place a neutron source which is the radium beryllium and now if we take a look you will notice that the heat values and the depletion value are going up very slowly so the pile is now stable so a simple solution for stabilizing a multi-layered Chicago pile is simply leave gaps in the middle that will allow some of the neutrons to escape. Next up we have Xenox reactor, a gas cooled reactor which will use carbon dioxide to transfer all of the fission heat to water which will then get converted into super dying steam. The pressure gauge that you see here shows you the pressure of carbon dioxide inside the reactor. 
carbon dioxide can be vented out using the red valve which will make the pressure gauge come down but simultaneously the temperature gauge will go up because there is less gas in the system to transfer all of the heat out into water. So you want to maintain a nice balance between temperature and pressure. Neither one of these gauges should ever reach the maximum value because if they do, the reactor will explode. Another thing that you need to remember is always turn off this reactor before putting in more carbon dioxide. Because if the reactor is running and you start inputting carbon dioxide into the system, the reactor will explode. So first turn off the reactor, then you can input some carbon dioxide using a barrel or pipes directly. And you will notice that once again the Xenox reactor will have full buffer of carbon dioxide in it. The pressure is at 10 bars and we can start the reactor again and it will end up at 26 bar. Next up we have the research reactor. So for the research reactor it's best to build a containment building using reinforced blocks. Every block should be either concrete and even if you are using transparent blocks or light blocks they should be reinforced as well. And make sure to cover the entire thing in water. Then inside you can place the research reactor. Because the research reactor is going to require all of the surrounding water in order to cool itself down. Now controlling the reactor is simple because it has a reactor remote control block which can be set to different values. So here you can have maximum and minimum value for temperature and the value or the position of the control rod which should be there at these temperatures. So for the maximum temperature I'm going to set 900, minimum is 0 and once you click on save the reactor will or basically the control rods will come up. Now you can see the reactor is running and we have a heat value of 292 degrees celsius and the control rods are down by 69%. If I place another breeding reactor then you will see that the control rods are down even more they are down to 62 percent now do remember that the reactor cannot control very fast reacting rods or this mechanism will explode if you are using something explosive like shear beta. but the benefit of using the water containment system like we did here is that none of the corium that will come out will escape out Next we have the big nuclear reactor which is one of the safest and the easiest reactor you can use because there are no variables involved here. Once you start raising the control rod slowly the heat value will start going up. You need to make sure that the heat value for hull and the core never reaches 1000 degrees celsius because if any one of the heat value ever reaches 1000 degrees celsius the reactor will explode. It's as simple as that. Now the fuel that I'm using here is the most dangerous one. It is sherbidium. But when you're using some kind of lower grade fuel like uranium plutonium, heat will never reach 1000 degrees celsius even if you raise the control rods 100%. So yeah, raise the control rods slowly. It's in your hands. The entire reactor is manually operated and the reactor will never explode. Next up we have the RBMK, a reactor which deserves a video all on its own. Now I am no RBMK expert but I have exploded my fair share of reactors so here are the things that I have learned. Placing control rods is crucial. So make sure to place control rods between every two fuel rods or between fuel rods and reflectors. Now not only will this help in controlling the amount of neutrons passing through the fuel rod but it will come in handy when you are in a case of emergency. So if your reactor is AZ5 compatible and you press the button all of the control rods will come down thus shutting down the reactor and preventing a meltdown. Another thing, make sure to have more than enough steam channels placed in your reactor so that it can cool down actively using water by getting converted into steam. Even better than using normal control rods, you can use automatic control rods. With this, you will be able to set the level of the control rods at maximum and minimum heat and the value of the maximum and minimum heat are also customizable. So you can set them just below the melting point of the fuel rod and that can avoid a meltdown. Now this only applies for very hot running reactors but you can also use RBMK coolers which will make sure that the fuel rod which is placed adjacent to it or any column placed adjacent to it won't go over 750 degrees celsius. Now if you have made a new reactor type make sure to test it in your creative world first and then bring it in your survival world. Another big factor that goes into play while making an RBMK is the vast array of fuel available that you can use in the reactor. The function type that you generally want to go for is the medium function type as that's very easy to stabilize. Now if you are planning on using a fuel rod that's dangerous function type also make sure to stabilize it use a fuel rod which has a safe function or an oiler function like the thorium fuel rod and you can also use RBMK coolers with it so that the temperature doesn't go over 750 degrees celsius. Now like the breeding reactor for the RBMK reactor you can make a containment building made entirely out of concrete 
Here I have used glass just to show you and make sure to have water on the base. Now this goes a long way in cleaning up or easing the process of cleaning up the reactor. So here as you can see a reactor exploded, not a lot of debris flew, flew off cause it was only a single rod. But look what happens to the corium that we had or which came out of the reactor. As it is not going to touch water, all of the corium is simply going to solidify here and then it becomes very easy to clean up rather than cleaning up a very big mess of cobblestone or oh sorry cobblestone and corium. All right, coming to the end, we have the fusion reactor. Now the fusion reactor has two main components, the blanket and the battery that keeps the magnet going. Any two of these things, if not there, is going to make the fusion reactor go boom. So make sure to keep an eye out for the durability of the blanket and also the power that the fusion reactor will need. Because if this power runs out, there we go. Now this explosion is not very big unless you are using the Bellfire fuel but it's still a waste of resources so yeah that's that. Stabilizing the cyclotron is the simplest out of them all. Just make sure to have coolant in the cyclotron before running it otherwise it will explode in a violent manner. And with that we come to our last reactor which is going to be the DFC. Here there are two components at play the emitting power and the stabilizing power. Just make sure that the heat saturation never reaches 100%. As you start raising the emitter power, the heat saturation will also start going up. The more powerful fuel that you are using, the more the heat saturation will go up. And if heat saturation reaches 100%, that means your reactor is going to explode. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out my guys, stay safe.